What's up, Big Blue Nation? I'm your boy, Bradley B. Rowe, and I'm back again this week, and I have a special guest, former Wildcat, Josh Harrelson, man. How you doing? Oh, man, doing good, doing good. Uh, as good as I can be during this time, but everything's all right. Yeah, it's pretty crazy during this time. I guess we're going to start you out, man. Um, what, what have you been doing, I guess, during this time? I, I guess keep yourself busy. Uh, I got back from Japan about, about a month ago. Um, and since I got back, uh, just been doing stuff around the house, doing some home projects, hanging out with the family. Uh, you know, since I'm overseas a lot, I don't get to spend as much time with them as I like. So I uh, just trying to catch up on that since I had more of a break this season. Yeah, I guess, I guess going into your, your experience at Japan, you're playing overseas, uh, for people that don't know, uh, you're kind of like a legend over there, man. You led the, the league last year in rebounds and stuff. I guess just talk, talk to me about uh, that whole experience there playing basketball in Japan. Uh, Japan has been great. Uh, it's kind of turned into like a second home for us. Um, this is my fourth season over there. Um, and you know, uh, I'm like, like, like you said, no, you know, like, like it's, it's very nice because over there, like I'm like LeBron, you know, people wear my Jersey, people, people like me, people cheer for me. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been crazy. Um, it's turned out to be a great place, a place I never expected to play, but uh, I'm so happy I made that transition four years ago. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, as a hooper, you know, you want to play wherever you can, make a little bit of money, you know, feel like your dream. And I and I guess going back to before you even got to Kentucky, you played in a junior college and stuff. I guess just take me through that journey too. You know, how how what was it like before you get to Kentucky? You had to go through some some junior colleges, some different courses to get there. Just tell me about that. Uh, it was it was a little bit of an experience, uh, you know, a learning experience too, because. Uh, I didn't start playing basketball until high school, uh, until 14, 15. So uh, I really didn't know recruiting. You know, nobody in my family ever went to college, so we didn't know anything about it. Um, you know, and then before my senior year in uh, high school, I actually committed to Western Illinois University. And then uh, I, a lot of stuff started coming out about the coach. He might get fired the next season, all this other stuff. So, And then I started playing against guys that were going to bigger schools, like Alex Tice went to Florida. I was playing against him. He's from St. Louis. And – I was like, why, why is he going to Florida? I'm, I committed to Western Illinois. You know, I'm like, wh what am I doing? And so then I, I, I kind of – I backed out on my commitment, and then they wouldn't release me. So my only choice was to go to junior college for one year. It was supposed to be two years, but then the coach ended up getting fired, and the AD released me. So uh, luckily that happened, and luckily I didn't go there because, you know, how that story unfolded. But, you know, uh, I think I made the right choice. Yeah, you, you did. And I guess, you know, leading into your first year, you, you were there with Coach Billy Gillespie. And, you know, we hear all the crazy stories and all the things that happened there. I guess, what was your experience like? I, I know some of the stories. I guess, what is some of your experience when you went through that whole process with Coach Gillespie? Oh, man, like another learning experience. Uh, I mean, I, I as far as being a coach, mm -hmm. as far as being a coach, he was a great coach. As far as being a teacher, he was terrible. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I don't know how he is now. You know, I, I know he's going through a lot in his life in the last few years. Maybe he's, you know, kind of, you know, awoken in himself and kind of realized what he has done. Um, but, you know, when he was at Kentucky, like, as far as knowing X's and O's and that kind of schemes and stuff, he was, he was phenomenal. Um, but I always kind of broke it down as, like, you know, he was at Texas a and He wasn't getting thoroughbreds. You know, when you're at the University of Kentucky, you can recruit players just by that name. It doesn't matter what kind of coach you are, who you are. Like, you have that UK symbol on your shirt when you go recruit recruit players. They're like, oh, man, I want to play there. It's the greatest basketball tradition ever. Um, so he wasn't used to getting players like Patrick Patterson, who was already uh, a McDonald's All-American. You know, Jody Meeks, who was already a great player. So he wasn't used to getting players like that. So he was still doing this old thing of breaking players down and trying to rebuild them. But at Kentucky, he was getting players that were already ready to go in and play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And it was a transition. I know that everybody was kind of excited for him whenever he had AC Law and all those guys at Texas Tech and they beat Louisville. And everybody was like, oh, man, this is what Kentucky needs. Yeah. And it wasn't the right choice for him. But I guess moving on, they got the right guy. And Coach Calipari, you know, when he came in, you 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 went from having, you know, a lot of success when you first played for Billy Gillespie, playing like 34 games, and then all of a sudden you had to sit on the bench because he recruited all these juggernauts. I guess, how did that make you feel during that time? I know it was very frustrating for you. 
Uh, it, it was frustrating at times, but, you know, most of the time, I mean, we were we were 38-2 and two at one point in the season, so I really couldn't complain too much. Uh, you know, I played against – I played behind, you know, number, the fourth overall pick in the draft, and, you know, that year we had five first-rounders. So, I mean, I couldn't really be too too mad about my situation. Uh, you know, the only thing I try to look forward to is, you know, practice every day I was playing against the best players in the country. Yeah, and I guess, you know, you were you had your shot because obviously Enos Cantor didn't get the opportunity to play and you stepped right in and you, you you were able to get those minutes. I guess just talking about, you know, you know, I guess your transformation in doing that, you know, getting yourself in shape and, you know, staying focused. What was that like for you? Uh, it was a battle, uh, you know, especially especially getting in shape because, uh, you you know, you were around with, with uh, KSR when all that happened and um, – <laughs> Yeah, sending that tweet out was, you know, it was it was the smartest, dumbest thing I ever did. But uh, you know, it, it got me to where I was. It it put me in the best shape of my life. Uh it put me in a position to help my team get to the final four and kind of lead them as a senior. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a, it was a, every day was a battle. Every day I wanted to quit. Um, but you know, I I just I I I give a lot of credit to Coach Gillespie because that first year playing for him got me through to what I had to do for Coach Cal. Um, if I, I don't know if I would have did that for Coach Gillespie if I would have been able to do what I did for Coach Cal uh, because every day was a battle, it was a struggle. Um, but, you know, I had great teammates. I had great friends. Uh, I had great mentors that kept me pushing through every day to get to where I was. Yeah, and, you know, you really broke out. I remember the game against Louisville where you had 23 points and, like, 14 rebounds. I mean, you just absolutely just had the game of your life. I guess talk about that. That was kind of like the, I guess, coming out party for yourself. Yeah, it was. And that was kind of a turning point where, you know, I gained more confidence in myself. Um, you know, like like you said, not playing a lot my junior year uh, took a lot of confidence um, for myself. Um, and then, you know, kind of having that game against Louisville, you know, a lot of people seeing that I could actually, you know, I could actually play um, kind of gave me a little more confidence, you know. And that's like, you know, that was only my, that was only my eighth year playing basketball. So, like, I'm still learning at this point in my career, too. Um, you know, in college, I was still learning every single day how to get better. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's sometimes that's the best way. You just learn as you go, and I feel, I feel like that's what you did. And moving on to the postseason that year, I mean, God, I mean, you played against Jared Sullinger, Ohio State, North Carolina, the beast, the beast, and you had a breakout season, uh, you know, a breakout postseason. Just talk about that, man. I was pretty special to watch there in New Jersey. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a great run. Uh, like you said, you know, going into the, the Sweet 16, matched up against the number one team in the country, uh, you know, I knew he wasn't better than Ennis. And every day I'm going against Ennis Cantor in practice. You know, Ennis was just a phenomenal player. He might not be the most athletic center in the league, but footwork, his body, his strength was just unbelievable for being 18 years old. And, uh, you know, I knew I'm going to get this guy every single day in practice. Like, I know Jared Soldier's not better than this guy. So if I go out here and just play and compete, I know that I'm going to go out here and have a good game. Yeah, I know, and, and those good games led to you, uh, you know, obviously getting the nickname Jorts, I guess, going back to that. Uh, that was, uh, that was uh, uh, I guess, phenomenal to watch. You know, I remember going on your Jorts tour after you got done, you know, at Kentucky. But just talk about the whole process of that coming and evolve, you wearing the Jorts and then that becoming big a big name, you know. I mean, man, from St. Charles, Missouri, man, that's that's what I did. I, You know, I, I always had my, my gym shorts underneath my jean shorts, and, I thought jean shorts was like a little more, you know, a little more sophisticated to wear around instead of just wearing basketball shorts all the time. So I always had my basketball shorts underneath just in case we ever wanted to play pickup or something. So I always had them on. And when I went to my when I went to my visit in Kentucky and there was the blue and white scrimmage football game and somebody called a picture of it. Matt Jones put on KSR and, and it just blew up. And then as my name got bigger, the nickname got bigger. And, I mean, there was times when people didn't even know my real name. They just knew me by Jorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's what a lot of people could ask me. Like, what is Josh's last name? I only know him as, as Jorts. I'm like, it's Harrelson, you know, like a lot of people yeah. know. So, but, uh, I mean, you know, you getting that nickname, you playing so well at Kentucky, it gave you the opportunity to be drafted, um, you know, in an NBA draft. I guess, man, that had to be something special for yourself. To, you know, you come from Missouri, small town, junior college, all the stuff you went through at Kentucky, then all of a sudden you get drafted to the NBA. What was, I mean, I guess just tell me, you know, that process. Oh, I mean, it was, I mean, even to be considered to get drafted was, you know, such an honor. Um, you know, I, like I said, man, I started playing basketball so late in my career, like the NBA, I never even thought that was like somewhere I would go play. You know, most kids play basketball the whole life, dream of the NBA. And you know, I was like, I, I never 
thought of the NBA in my entire career until my senior year. Uh, you know, when people start saying, oh, this kid, he might be able to get drafted, you know. And then I started going to my workouts. Um, and I had great workouts for a lot of great teams. And, uh, you know, a lot of people start – after my workouts, I had the interviews with these teams. And they're like, wow, we didn't know you could do this. We didn't know you could do that. We didn't know you could do all this stuff. So, um, you know, and then, like you said, on draft night, you know, I was surrounded by about 70 people, a bunch of my high school friends, my family, my, you know, my cousins, my best friends. So, uh, I mean, just to see my name go across that TV, it was just – it was an amazing feeling. Yeah, I'm, I can only imagine, man. That's every kid's dream, you know, be, be drafted or hear their name called in the draft. And you were lucky enough, you know, when you, you got drafted to the New Orleans Hornets at the time, now they're the Pelicans. But then you um, were immediately traded to the Knicks. And then you had your opportunity to play with the Knicks because Amari Stoudemire went down. And then you balled out. I mean, just talk about that. I mean, it keeps like one thing after another keeps getting better for you. Yeah, uh, New York was one of my best workouts I had. Uh, you know, they didn't know I could stretch the floor like I could. Uh, they didn't know I had a different, you know, arsenal to my game. Because at Kentucky, I didn't have to do anything, you know. We had such – we had so many great players around us that I could just be one-dimensional at Kentucky, and it was – it was it worked. Uh, but, you know, when I went to New York, like, I was stretching the floor. And, you know, Dan Tony loves fours that could stretch the floor. And, you know, now, now every team has that. And <laughs> when I was in the league, like, there wasn't many players that were doing that. So when I went to New York and Dan Tony saw I could rebound, I played defense, and I could shoot, like, he just fell in love with me. And that's why – I think that's why he wanted to invest so much money to buy me from New Orleans before they even had me, uh, you know, as a second-round pick. And then, you know, he ended up keeping me. I made the team. Uh, like you said, then Amari goes down my, my third game of my career. And, of course, it's a start against DeMarcus Cousins. And 14-12 and 12 was kind of payback for all those years he punished me. So. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, man, it was just – everything just kind of started falling in place. Yeah, man, it was definitely special, man, and definitely special. And you be able to play against your former teammate there. And then, I, you know, I guess moving on to Miami, you were on there for a little short time. I got I got to ask you about, you know, playing with LeBron. And I know you have to regret not being on that team whenever they wanted the championship. I know you wanted to get that ring. Just talk about being in Miami yeah. in that little time that you were there. Uh, Miami was a, it was a, like another great learning experience, you know, watching these guys being professionals, uh, you know, these guys are 10, 11 years in the league and they're still in the gym early. They're getting work. They're staying later to get their body right. Uh, you know, so going there watching these guys and the, the level of professionals that they were and their work ethic playing with LeBron, Ray Allen, Chris Bosh, D Wade, Rashard Lewis, Mike Miller, you know, just so many great names that I played with in Miami. It was just, they were such great players, and they they were even better people. Yeah, no, that was definitely a special team. And, and what, I have a quick story about that situation. Uh, when you were on there, TJ and I, Beisner, were heading up to uh, the Pacers to go interview you, and you got waived that same day. But we still went uh -huh. on anyhow, and we got an opportunity to talk to LeBron and Ray Allen and, and be in the locker room Dwayne Wade when they played up there. So I want to say thank you for uh, <laughs> giving the <laughs> opportunity to be able to meet up with LeBron. That's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah that, was, it was a, that was a special experience. Yeah. And then I guess, man, uh, during this time, uh, you, you've been quarantined in the house. Uh, what, are you, what are you watching on Netflix, man, or Hulu or Amazon Prime? What's, what's in the playlist, man? Well, I, I've been waiting for the last dance finally finished, so now I'm gonna binge watch that. I haven't watched any episodes yet because I just wanted to watch them all at one time. Yeah. Um, but before that, I mean, I was watching Ozark. I finished that, which was really good. Um, been playing a lot of Call of Duty. I don't know if you see my tweets trying to get people to play with me all the time, but uh, <laughs> playing some Call of Duty and you know just playing games, playing playing with the family, playing with my daughter. Uh, you know, she loves to keep me busy playing games, so. Uh, oh, yeah, my wife's making me do some TikToks. So I don't have any choice, but, you know, i got to play along. <laughs> no, I totally understand that, man. My sons, I had twin boys, and they, they love TikTok, you know, and they 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 done a couple things on there. They hadn't put me on there yet. I've kind of refused to be on TikTok as, as of right now. I'm like, I'm I'm in dad mode. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm on there, you know. <laughs> I, feel, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess, uh, what, what do you miss the most about being in Lexington and Kentucky, man, uh, when your your time was there? What is the, the thing, I guess, if you wanted to, you know, talk about or at least reach out to BBN right now, what was the one thing you missed the most? I mean, just being around, like, the fans and all the love and support. Uh, you know, I still get a lot of love and support through Twitter. 
um, you know, but just being able to interact with fans, you know, I've, I've always loved doing that. You know, if it was, if it was, if it was the big blue camp out, you know, I love being out there playing basketball with the fans. Uh, you know, I love playing cornhole with the fans. You know, I just love interacting with the fans and just showing them the love back that they have showed so many Wildcats through the years. Yeah, man, they, they definitely love you, man. They always supported you. They always support any, you know, player that come through Kentucky, whether you transferred or you left or whatever, you come back. It's always love, man, they show to the players. And that's what something yeah. a lot of other universities don't do. You know, a lot of other fan base don't do, you know. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, I mean, that's why that's why everybody says Kentucky's got the greatest fan base in the world. You know, I mean, I've seen I've seen fans from from the states all the way to China. You know, and just sometimes you just randomly see some people with Kentucky shirts on. Like I've seen some people in Japan. Uh, you know, my what about two years ago they all had Kentucky shirts on, and I was like, "Where y'all from?" And they're like, "We're from Louisville." And actually, one of the guys played football at Louisville. But the but the his girlfriend and the mom were both Kentucky fans, so I ended up interacting with them, and it was just such a crazy experience. Huh, that's pretty neat, man. You, I love to hear those type of stories because you know it happens, and I love to hear that. Uh, before I, I guess let you go, man. Um, what kind of workouts are you doing to keep yourself in shape, man? What are you doing? What is a Josh Harrelson workout? I mean, to be honest, I, I hate running, <laughs> especially all that all that running I did in Kentucky. So. I like to ride my bike. I got a nice, nice trek, big mountain bike that fits me pretty well. So I like to go bike riding. My daughter loves bike riding. My wife likes bike riding. So we like to go for family bike rides. Um, you know, I just do a little stuff in the house, maybe with the band, some squats. Me and my daughter do some challenges and stuff. So <laughs> not, nothing too serious right now. I'm, I'm hoping some stuff will open up in the next couple of weeks where I can get on a court. Um, but right now, you know, just trying to do some body weight stuff, just trying to keep my body fresh. Well, that's cool that you're doing a family thing with them. That's definitely cool. I do it with my sons. I see your daughter kind of peep in. You can bring her on in here. You can introduce her. She can say hello. Hey, how you doing? Kentucky, she got a Kentucky blue on. Say hi. <laughs> this is Ariana. Ariana. Okay. How old is Ariana? How old are you? Five. Oh, man, she's tall, man. She's going to be tall like her daddy. <laughs> yeah, you better, better tag Ma uh, Matthew Mitchell in this. She's five, and she's about a little over four, four, about a little four feet tall. Oh, man. Dang. Yeah. We want another – it's gonna be big. Tag Matthew Mitchell. Hey, start the recruiting process. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kind of like it. I kind of like that. She's gonna she's gonna look. She's gonna be a hooper. She got the height for it. So yeah. Hey, Josh, I want to say, man, thank you for for joining me, man. It's always good to catch up with you. I'm glad right. you were able to thank you. bring your daughter in there and say hello, man. It's always good times. Oh yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it.